All right, hello Richard. How good are morning. you doing? Good evening. So good I'm, afternoon. Good. Yes, yeah, so wherever you are in the world, wherever you're listening, I'm here in London. You are, of course, in LA, um, and we're we're going to talk about your work with Swing Out Sister, especially their hit single "Breakout," which was mm-hmm. released, I think, in 1986. I'm afraid so. Um, yes, long <laughs> before you more. were born. Yeah. Well, not that long before, but still, yeah. (laughs) I was not yet a twinkle in my parents' eyes, as you said before. Uh, But yeah, I love this song and I love the arrangement you did. And you want to tell us a little bit about how you first got asked to be part of this? Sure. Well, I had done a lot of work with the producer, Paul Stavely O'Duffy, uh, who was a really excellent producer. And uh, probably still is. I I haven't seen him for years, but a lovely fellow. And uh, I had done Curiosity Killed the Cat with him, which was fun. And I also did Was Not Was. And those were records that I did with with Paul. So I got a call from him and they were working on the kind of initial tracks and demos and stuff like that uh, at a little studio in Chiswick which I've forgotten the name of, but it was on the Chiswick High Road, not the famous studio. Not Metropolis. Were, not Metropolis, uh, but a little tiny studio that was, you had to go upstairs over into this little room, and it was, you know, obviously low budget concept. He said, I'm working on this track, and I think it's down your alley because it's a bit jazzy and, you know, come down. And so I heard the track, and I met Corin and Andy. I can't remember whether Martin was there. Andy Connell, of course, is the keyboard player and mm-hmm. uh, co-songwriter. And Corin Drury uh, is the vocalist. fabulous vocalist. Yeah. A, and I noticed right away when I heard the thing that she had a unique kind of voice. Uh, yeah. She wasn't this kind of a singer, you know. Mm-hmm. She was. She had a a, a voice that sounded very, uh, I mean, I described it in in the uh, poem that I wrote for their liner notes as an alto flute kind of a voice. Yeah, I, I can that, see that. It's a that richness. Kind of, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it's and a smoothness and easygoing kind yeah. of quality in the and, voice. I mean, she started off as a model, didn't she? Or a fashion designer? No, she something. started out as a fashion designer. She yeah. was, she was in, uh, I think she was a fashion student, and, and I think she was involved in that uh, profession uh, when they were all getting together. And I can't remember the exact details of how the band got together, but uh, the three of them finally decided to, to do so. I think they were a different group when they started. But anyway, here I am in this little studio in Chiswick, and uh, it was great because I, you know, I could be there in five minutes from my house. And yeah. uh, so I, I love gigs like that. Uh, <laughs> Me too. I heard this track and I thought, yeah, there's this guy's a jazz guy. And the way I could tell immediately that Andy was a jazz guy was his use of the substitute dominant. He was using those kinds of harmonic mm. chords for those of you who are musicians. But I can give you a demonstration, actually. Oh, yeah, it. please do. Oh, I'd love to. Oh. So I, I, I sort of vaguely remember that the song was in F. Uh, right. And, memory. Yeah, you can't really hear this guitar, but the, you can't see it. But anyway, <laughs> so if I want to go here, one to four, yeah. you know, yeah. so instead of going straight like that, he went from one to Ah, that is a jazz thing to do. I yeah. Don't you can hear that. So that was don't stop to ask. And so so that yeah. immediately told me this guy is a jazz guy. I said, what do you want? He says, Well, we're sort of thinking strings and brass, but we can't afford strings. And I said, What do you mean you can't? He's well phonogram the mercury, who they were. Debut album, right? Yeah, they, they were they were a new album. group. Nobody knew anything yeah. about them. And they said, well, yeah. we can afford brass. We can afford a four-piece brass section. It's all in my book, yeah. my, my other book here, this one. Oh. Is, I, I have the arrangement there. And, ah. uh, and of course, if, if you cool. go to the, 
to the end chapters, I talk about myself. And I, well, anyway, it's all, you know, there's music here. And you can, you can see the original arrangement. Uh, wow. But anyway, I knew I had to do the strings using synthesizers. And I hired this great guy who I knew called Vic, who was a wonderful, he was in a group called Sad Cafe. Do you remember that, that group? You know what? I somebody actually requested a song by Sad Cafe recently at a gig of mine, and I um I hadn't I haven't heard I still haven't heard them, but I need to, I need to because um I, I was recommended them highly. Yeah, they they had a they had a great single that went you know I think I can't remember the, the title of it, but it was a great. They were a good group, and so okay. but I knew this guy who would and he had the Yamaha CS80. Now, I don't know okay. if you remember this keyboard, but it, no. it was a beautiful sounding keyboard, but it was the size of a hippo and it weighed four times what a hippo weighs. And so transporting it anywhere was torture, pain, and you knew that you were going to throw your back out anytime yeah. that you had to move it anywhere. So only people who were in groups like Sad Cafe and could afford roadies. Uh, could have a keyboard like this, but it was gorgeous and it had it had wonderful pads. I mean, uh, yeah. one you know, sort of Lyle Mazish types pads, but nice. but it also had a, a, he had had programmed a string sound that didn't make me actually gag because most synthetic <laughs> strings make me actually gag. Yeah. Uh, so I wrote out the string arrangement and then he played the individual parts in. We did violin one, violin two, violas, cello, and, and that's how we manifested the string wow. section on that record. And if you listen to it, it's not it's not a good sound. I'm not going to say that it's a good sound, but it was kind of good in the terms of pop. Yeah, so, absolutely. So I mean, it, it it's, it sounded like a lot more modern synth string than uh, than most records of the time because yeah. uh, you know because the synth sounds have got better I think in terms of strings as they've got more sophisticated over the years. I don't know if you would agree or not, but indeed, yeah, but, um, no, they, no, they have, and, and and of course now we have we're using digital samples, so yeah. it's, it it sounds pretty good apart from mm -hmm. uh, its complete and utter lack of dynamics because. Uh, when you're pl playing a violin, as you well know, mm -hmm. you know, one note can have a whole range of dynamics, whereas yeah. with with uh, the samples, Absolutely. it's much harder mm -hmm. and takes much more time. And by the time you've spent the money on the on, on the uh, the instrument and the studio time and, and all of that, you could have gone in with the string section and nailed it in 30 minutes, you know. So anyway, <laughs> that's that's a little rant over with. But Radio Richard. Share, subscribe, even donate. So that's how we did the strings on it. But for the brass, I, I had John Thurkel, uh, who, mm. of course, is still with Swing Our Sister to this day, uh, doing gigs and, mm. and uh, one of the greatest uh, people I've ever known in the music business. And uh, he can do everything. And uh, so he got together a little section and 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 that's what how we did that now when i heard the track the first thing i heard was this long longish introduction mm -hmm. and i thought hmm we got to do something there and then and then i heard a a kind of a bass riff mm -hmm. and i but there was nothing happening there so then i thought okay and then i heard the song and the song was great but to me the song didn't actually have a hook in the traditional pop sense of a hook. What happens mm -hmm. is it's got don't stop to ask. Da -da 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 we got to find a way to break out. And that's that is the whole hook is break yeah. out. If, and this don't stop to ask. I don't really regard that quite as a hook. I regard it from a songwriter's point of view as a fantastic ramp up to the hook. Or a pre-chorus, but but the real chorus is but so then I had four bars with nothing in it, yeah, except a, a fantastic groove and a bass line that was reminiscent of a kind of a Joe Zawinul weather report kind of yeah. sound, 
Tom, Absolutely. Tom, tom. Like slap, sort of, yeah, quite funky. Okay, yeah. so then, then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to steal a little part of the bass line and I'm going to put a catchy horn riff right here. This is going to be mm. a second hook or, in, in my opinion, songwriting construction-wise, kind of the hook, which yeah. is that, that brass line, which everybody, over the years, people walk up to me and say, Oh, you're Richard Niles. You know, and they sing me the brass line. Um, That's amazing. I felt I that. very honored when Jerry Hay, uh, who has played on a million uh, American hits as the leader of, of a brass section, he's a trumpet player. He came up to me one uh, one evening at a at a gig and he said, Oh, I hear you're Richard Niles. And he sang the line to me. And he said, yeah, man, that was that was the hippest thing. That was, we, When that came out on the radio, we all thought that was really hip. And I thought, who did that? And then I found out you did it. So, I mean, that was a tremendous honor for me because oh, wow, of course, I've been listening, listening to him play on so many hits, Michael Jackson yeah. and so many other hits. So that was really great. Yeah. So... So that's how that thing came about and uh, recording it was easy. We recorded it in the Master Rock Studios uh, in North London, which was a great studio. And I don't believe it exists anymore, but that's one of the so many too. great studios that doesn't exist. I did a lot of wonderful records there. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it was really nice to, to work there. And I'll tell you why. Here's the reason, food. <laughs> They had, the, oh. they had their own kitchen and you know you got a nice lunch you got a nice, nice. dinner a good band yeah. runs on its stomach as you well know <laughs> absolutely and i think when i've been to studios that have kitchens it makes a huge difference <laughs> yeah exactly yeah exactly. and rather than just living off a takeaway which you know it's like not quite as good for you <laughs> <clears throat> yeah they can't be okay then. come but, to the know. studio bring a doggy bag on mm -hmm. the record i also did twilight world Fooled by a Smile and Surrender, those those three tracks. But here's the hip thing. Once Breakout came out and was a number one hit worldwide, uh, actually it was number four in the UK, but it was number six in the in the USA in the pop That's charts, which was a amazing. tremendous, tremendous achievement for a British group. And and yeah. it was the AC Adult Contemporary number one. And yeah. that's why so many uh, people of that generation knew the record because they were just playing it nonstop on, on the AC stations, which is what we all want. I did all those tracks and, and of course I was able to use real strings and mm. I'm particularly happy with the stuff that I did on Twilight World and you can hear various mixes of that and on one of the mixes I'm actually rapping they asked they said would you like to I would like you to do a rap on this and I said sure I'm the perfect person to be rapping so so I wrote this kind of amusing satirical type of rap uh, on that's there amazing. About, yeah twilight world you know and I did a whole character so for those of you who can find the mix uh it's it's great fun the, the other interesting kind of thing about that record is that they they asked me when they were putting the artwork together, they asked me to write some liner notes, which, of course, Amazing. you know, asking Richard Niles to do that is kind of a red rag to a bull, as they say. So <laughs> so uh, so I wrote these kind of beatnik bop poetry liner notes to it. So you wrote the liner notes for this album. I'd love to see them or hear them. Well, I, I can read them to you. I can show them to you here. Oh, wow. So my feeling about it was that they were had this jazzy, bohemian kind of flavor to their to their thing. So yeah. I wrote a kind of a beat poetry thing that's that echoed the kind of late 50s beatnik era. Amazing. So here it is. Don't tell anyone, but these guys are hip. They broke out and broke away, and you sweetly surrendered without hype, without gimmicks, just tight snared grooves, bohemian harmony, swing boplicity. Out of the cool and into your radio's heart, but don't tell anyone. The jazz police are everywhere, on the lookout for the in the know. So speak the silent way, or it could be too late to cry. After all, you gave them your ears, guilty. And I, like some backstreet dealer, scored bright brass filigree and satin sheets of strings for them. And we'd risk it all again, 
for Rhythmastic Martin's peculiar sense of fun. Andy's deviously wrong chords seen in all the right places. Yes, Corinne, glamorous flapper head to clunky sister shoes with that optimistic alto flute we call her voice. What the hell? Tell everyone. It's the worst kept secret in the best dressed world. Swing out sister. They went out as moon dreams and came back as stars. So I love it. Wow. I also used a lot of the titles of their songs in there. Nice. So <laughs> that, that was part of the thing. Surrender was one of the songs. And well, you the, those of you who know, know the record will know that there's a lot of song titles in there. And I also <laughs> mentioned things like jazz tunes, like Moon Dreams and stuff like that. Publicity. So, I heard publicity, publicity. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, that was the thing. And so amazed that they liked it and put it on the record, which was great. It's amazing. I mean, I'm not amazed. I'm, I mean, I'm not surprised because it's wonderful. So yeah. <laughs> that's so fun. I, lo I love that. That's so I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm super glad that that record was um, such a huge hit because it was mm. great. And it's, it sort of embodies everything that I think a great pop record should be because it's super musical and mm. it's super catchy and it's optimistic. And uh, there were so many singles from the record, which was great. And, and also... Another reason that they called me was that they had liked Slave to the Rhythm. So I definitely did Slave to the Rhythm before I did this. Yes. And they knew they wanted brass and they liked the sound of the brass on that record. So yeah. there we are. There you go. Wow. I'm, well, I'm sure everybody's already heard this before, but now maybe they can hear hear it again with new ears and look out for those brass hooks. Yeah. And hear, hear that, that synth sound from that Yamaha keyboard that... Um, that actually sounds yeah really good i think yeah the cs80 um, if anybody yeah. wants a hernia buy that keyboard <laughs> very good well exciting well I'm, I'm looking forward to um to our next chat which will be about a record you worked on for tears for fears Indeed. a couple of years later so yeah let's we'll see you next time for that thank you very much okay. richard thanks a lot radio richard like share subscribe even donate radio richard be informed be amazed be inspired